This is case seven, a two week old with a renal mass. Low power examination of the tumor failed to show any good interface between the tumor and normal kidney. Instead, what you can see are tubules and glomeruli entrapped within the tumor consistent with an infiltrative process. When approaching tumors, especially when you're within your early years of training, what I generally suggest is to first start with number one, is it normal or abnormal? Number two, if it's abnormal, why? Is it neoplastic, inflammatory? Could it be developmental and so on? And once you've decided that you're within that category of neoplasia, you try to put it into a broad category. Is it epithelial? I'll sometimes use the term epithelioid for tumors where you're not quite sure if it's truly epithelial and melanoma would be an example of an epithelioid tumor. Hematopoietic tumors, mesenchymal tumors or spindle cell type tumors and so on. And you can put those into those categories not only based on the cytology but also the architecture. So here you can see from low magnification you have this sense of fascicular arrangements. In other words, the tumor cells are growing in bundles, and those bundles are intersecting, giving it this unique appearance, which is pretty characteristic of mesenchymal-type tumors or spindle cell neoplasms. Here is a closer view to illustrate what we were just talking about in terms of fascicular arrangements. So you have these cells that are running in a particular plane, say this direction, and these are coming at you and these are going in a different direction, so it gives it this fascicular um, appearance, which is typical of spindle cell neoplasia. And then the nuclear morphology for spindle cell tumors, the nuclei also tend to be spindled, and the cytoplasmic processes also tend to have a tapering or spindled appearance as well. So in this particular case, we are dealing with a mesenchymal neoplasm. The question is, is it benign or malignant? When evaluating spindle cell tumors and trying to decide whether they're benign or malignant, you look at numerous factors. Number one, how big is the tumor? Number two, how cellular is the tumor? Does it have necrosis? Does it have nuclear atypia? And is it mitotically active? Now at this age, knowing the differential diagnosis, you're probably going to conclude pretty quickly that it's malignant, but let's look for some of these features. Number one, the tumor was relatively large. Number two, it's infiltrative, as we mentioned. So here is a renal tubule. It looks like a baby tubule. It's a little more cellular than adult tubules. But the tumor is growing around both the tubules and the glomeruli, consistent with an infiltrative process, and mitoses are present. There is nuclear atypia. It's sort of in that moderate, mild to moderate range, but there's definitely nuclear atypia. So even if we didn't know the best name for it, you would conclude that it was a sarcomatoid neoplasm or some form of sarcoma. This tumor also has some dilated vascular channels that you can see here that have somewhat of a staghorn-like appearance that may remind you of a solitary fibrous tumor or hemangiopericytoma, but that's not the right diagnosis for this age and tumor location. The combination of the patient's age being only two weeks old and the morphology that we just saw is most in keeping with a congenital mesoblastic nephroma. Congenital mesoblastic nephroma is relatively rare. It's a stromal tumor as we had mentioned or mesenchymal tumor and the vast majority occur within the first year of life. They are the most common renal tumor diagnosed prenatally and the term congenital would seem to suggest that it's present at birth. These tumors are malignant. Around 5 to 10 percent will show local recurrence and metastasis consistent with malignancy. In cases with a more cellular histology, cases with vascular involvement, and obviously cases that are more advanced stage are more likely to have local recurrence and metastatic disease. These tumors tend to be well circumscribed, relatively large. They can have areas of cystic degeneration and necrosis. They are typically centered in the hilum of the kidney. There are three histologic subtypes of congenital mesoblastic nephroma. Cellular variant, which is the most common, around 60%, 
a classic variant which is less cellular, and mixed which is just a combination of the two. So the classic variant has the intersecting fascicles. The cells appear to be more fibroblastic in appearance with tapering nuclei. They have a relatively low mitotic rate and they tend to have more abundant collagen. The cellular variant is, as it, the name would suggest, more densely cellular. They have less cytoplasm, causing, the, causing them to have the increased cellularity, and the fascicles tend to be less well formed, and the mitotic rate is high. You can sort of view it as the classic variant is more of a low-grade sarcomatoid neoplasm, and the cellular variant is more of a high-grade sarcomatoid neoplasm. Mixed just means it has foci of both the classic morphology and the cellular morphology, with the classic morphology tending to occur on the periphery of the tumor. Here are two examples of congenital mesoblastic nephroma of the classic type. Again, higher power view. The cells appear fibroblastic, meaning they have these tapering nuclei and tapering cytoplasmic processes. <clears throat> and here's an example of a cellular type, which is just more cellular. And the cells have less of a, of a tapering appearance, less of a fibroblastic appearance. And then you may see cases of mixed, of the mixed type, where it's cellular in one region of the tumor and less cellular in the other. In terms of immunohistochemistry, not terribly helpful. They stain like myofibroblasts would stain. And in general, my experience is, Tumors of myofibroblastic origin will be positive for actin, but negative for desmin. So they are not smooth muscle tumors, they just have some smooth muscle properties. The cellular variant of congenital mesoblastic nephroma has the same cytogenetic abnormalities as seen in infantile fibrosarcoma. Name one of these abnormalities. So the principal abnormality is a translocation between chromosomes 12 and 15 involving the ETV6 gene, which is a transcription factor on chromosome 12P13, and the NTRK3 gene, which is a tyrosine kinase receptor on 15Q25. So this is the end of the video for case 7.